But this is part two of Sheila's visit to Gillingham in Dorset in 2008. This is a live audio recording carrying on from where I was on part one, um, which is the Garden of Remembrance. So here we go. And we're in the second book one here to the memory of Thomas Matthews, whoever he was. You could probably look it up. Oh, there's a little putty cat. Hello, little putty cat. Do you want to pry into my machine? What's that? Hello? Grave cat. It's obviously a place where kids sit at night because there's all cans of coke. And a load of seats all gathered around together. Making use of the space. Look at there's lots of stones on the floor. Some all piled up in a heap. A way of tidying. I'm going to turn the tape off now, just to save it a minute, and hopefully I might come across somebody. I'll just mention a few names. There's um, a John Honeyfield, a Martha, somebody or other, Perry, and George Perry. And some of these are quite old, actually. But let me get my, I'll always read their names. Coons Ambrose Mead died 1894-74 These would be on the census with the Beelings Jane Lloyd and George Lloyd Galloway Yeah, I'm looking. Lidford. Thomas Fire and his wife Grace. Yeah, some of these are, there would have been a lot more in here. A lot more. Probably Sandy's ancestors in here somewhere. Just taking the odd photo or two, some of the stones propped up. One of a very old grave, but you can't really see it. What's written on it? One of the few left standing in the middle of the Garden of Remembrance. A huge stump that was once a great big tree of some description. So that holds a few memories. Right, I'm off to find the church now, which is just across the road. It's always worthwhile visiting these places, eh? You never know. The cemetery, it's actually called Cemetery Road. <coughs> Getting quite close to the church now. Right, oh, it's called St Mary's Virgin. It's got a clock, clock on there. It's uh, quarter past eight now. I've been busy for a whole hour. This has got lots of old graves in it as well. I doubt if the church should be open this time in the morning. I'll have to do my usual anti-clockwise. I'll just see if it's open, but I doubt it. I'm a bit early. You never know. Oh, it's locked. Right, I'm walking around clockwise as usual. One or two graves. They'll get tidied up these days. So the church is surrounded by little cottages. Surrounded at very old ones, some of them look. And there's a load of little creme stones as well. I'll just have a look at them. The name Beeling and the other names probably have carried on to a certain extent. Even though Sandy's family did move away. 
looking at it, it's under a readable, some huge, massive stone, this one, under a great big pine tree. Yeah, it's always a shame you can't get in, but that's it because it's so early. Um, they don't all have early morning services. They did look like there was another church further up. Right then, <clears throat> I'm off to um, Shaftesbury now. I might come across a place called Mottacombe, or Mottacombe, um, where there were some ancestors. I'm just going to have a quick look to see which ancestors I'm supposed to be looking for there. <coughs> right, just to make things easy, it's a Thomas Beeling, born Gillingham, died Ashmore, so I'll be going to Ashmore as well, and his wife, Elizabeth Bastable, born Stir Provis, died Ashmore. And then the Mottacombes, we've got Sophia Burden's father, William, from Mockham, died Shaftesbury, and Harriet Lambert, born Mockham, died Shaftesbury. And then William Burden's mother, Grace Broadway, I think, or Broad something, she was born Mockham, died Shaftesbury. So we've got Broadway, Lambert, Burden. Right, well I've arrived in Mockham. Right, uh, the tape for Mockham and Shaftesbury are in other um, audios that I've done. Um, the Shaftesbury one will continue um, in a moment. I'm not sure whether I'd be following under the Thomas Beeling though. I might be placing that under another name. So over and out for now.